Hi everyone, let's solve this problem right away. x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 equals to right. And um, the first step is to bring this to the left. This is x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 minus 2 equals 0. Now, what do you observe from here? You should be able to know that if the, the whole of this is equal to 0, so that means that this should be equal to 2 before you can equate all of this to 0, right? So now, we want to try to write this in this form. So I'll write x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2. We may not have to work with this bracket, right? But then we know that these two can be written as 1 plus 1. This is equal to 0. Now, x plus 3, x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2. Okay. Now, minus. This one can be 1 to the power of 3. Plus this one here can be 1 to the power of 2. And this is equal to 0. So now it is obvious that what is here is exactly what is here. If not, you're not going to have 0, right? But then we're not interested in getting only the real solution. If we're in interested in getting only the real solution, we would have concluded that x is equal to 1 by comparison. Okay, now I told you I was not going to use this bracket, right? So I will open it. I will have x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2. Then negative will open. We have 1 to the power of 3. The same negative will affect the other. So we have negative 1 to the power of 2 as everything equals 0. And at this point, there will be need for us to regroup. x to the power of 3 will come together with 1 to the power of 3. Right? This is the bracket I'm going to work with now. Then plus I have x squared minus 1 to the power of 2. This is equal to 0. So here I have difference of 2 cubes. And if there is a to the power of 3 minus b to the power of 3, this is the same thing as a minus b into a squared plus ab plus b squared. Okay, so this is an identity that you should know as a mathematics student. Now, if we go ahead from here, you see that our a is now x, our b is 1. So let's substitute into this. a minus b is x minus 1. a squared is x squared. ab is x times 1 and that is x. b squared is 1 squared and that is still 1. Then plus the difference of two squares here and that is going to be x minus 1 into x plus 1 difference of two squares so if we go ahead now you see that something is common and that is x minus 1 so x minus 1 com comes out as a common factor then here the whole of this is going to come down here x squared plus x plus 1 is coming down then plus this one is out here this positive is x plus one will still be there we'll still come into this um square bracket close it and equate to zero then x minus one is still a factor we can open this bracket to get x squared plus x plus x is 2x plus one um, one plus one that is 2. So we will now equate to 0. So from here it is obvious that it is either x minus 1 is 0 or x squared plus 2x plus 2 is 0. You should know when to apply this. You can only apply this when you are multiplying two terms to get 0. So from here now x minus 1 is 0. So our x is equal to 0 plus 1, right? 
and equally x is 1. This is the solution, I mean one of the solutions to the problem. Now I'm going to pick this quadratic equation and solve it using the formula method. So let's go there. Okay, so the formula is x equals minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2 multiplied by a. So that our x will now be minus b, minus b is minus 2, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which will be 2 squared, minus 4 times 1, because a is the coefficient of x squared, and that is 1. Then our c is 2, that will come here. Then we divide this by 2 times 1. So if we go ahead, our x is minus 2 plus or minus, we have the square root of 4 minus 8. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. Then we divide by 2. 2 times 1. So x is now minus 2 plus or minus. We have the square root of 4 minus 8 is minus 4. So we're going to write minus 4 as we divide by 2. So the next step is x is equal to minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 4. What have I done? I didn't put the negative. So multiply by the square root of negative 1. Then you divide by 2. So that if you go ahead, x will now be minus 2 plus or minus square root of 4 is 2. The square root of negative 1 is i. We divide this by 2. So that if we go ahead, x will be minus 2 plus or minus 2 times i. That is 2i. All of this is over 2. And then you know that this can go here. So that x will become minus 1 plus or minus. The same 2 will go there. Then we have 1i. 1i is better written as i. Okay. Now this 2 here is no longer there. And remember that this is a 2 in 1 solution. x from here is minus 1 plus i or minus 1 minus i. Now let's bring the three solutions together. x1, the first solution, is equal to 1. Then our second solution, x2, is equal to this particular one. That is minus 1 plus i. Then our x3. Our x3 is this particular one, which is minus 1 minus i. So these three are the solutions to the equation. Remember, the equation again is x to the power of 2 um, is 3. x to the power of 3 plus x to the power of 2 equals 2, right? Now, the first solution is the real solution, and the other two are complex solutions or complex roots.